Okay, students, now we come to another part of the infections. Another important part where it, the tuberculosis affects is the spine and is the most commonest part of the uh, uh, bone which tuberculosis did. It is also known as the pot spine named after the Percival pot. Introduction of the tuberculosis of the spine most common is organism and the organism which is affecting this is the mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is always secondary. The primary focus may be the lung, the lymph node or the gastrointestinal tract. It could be preceding history of trauma. Spine is the commonest affection of all skeletal tuberculosis that is almost 50%. The dorsal lumbar spine is most commonly affected. The spine is divided into cervical, then after that is the dorsal or thoracic part, then is the lumbar and last is the sacral part. So the dorsal lumbar region is the most common affection of the tuberculous spine. Coming to the root of the spread, it is by the hematogenous root that is the blood spread. It can also spread to the paravertebral plexus of veins, commonly known as the Batson's venous plexus. The types of tuberculous spine is very very important. We will see the different diagrams which are present over here that divide into paradiscal, the central, the anterior and then the posterior. By the word paradiscal that is adjacent vertebrae seen over here is where the tuberculous gets embedded and affects the vertebrae. The central is the central body of the vertebrae is affected by the word anterior you see the anterior longitudinal ligament is present in front of the vertebral bodies that is what affects the vertebral body as well as just behind the anterior longitudinal ligament while the posterior the affection is at the spine spinous process of the vertebrae these are the four important types of tuberculosis in the paradiscal the commonest is affecting the two adjacent vertebrae. In the central, it causes commonly the wedging or concertina collapse. This diagonal picture will tell you that the wedge collapse is seen where classically you can see that whole vertebral body, spine, everything is affected and this anterior wedging, that is anterior, it is compressed and much smaller, the, the thickness anteriorly is reduced drastically compared to the posterior aspect. While in the concentina collapse, by the word concentina is circumferential, so there is equally anterior as well as the middle and posterior all uniformly reduced in size. The anterior part is spreads and goes above and below the anterior longitudinal ligament, while posterior affects commonly the pedicles, the laminae, spinous process, and transverse process of the vertebrae. The pathology of tuberculosis is the bacteria first lodge in the vertebrae. There is granulomatous inflammation results in erosion of the margins of the vertebrae. Thirdly, nutrition is compromised because the vascularity is hampered and there is vascular stasis. Fourthly, that results in disc degeneration. And lastly, there is weakening of the trabeculae of the vertebral body leading to total collapse as shown earlier. The cold abscess is an integral part of tuberculosis as also mentioned that the cold abscess collection of the pus and trabecular debris which is there from the diseased vertebrae accumulate. The usually the signs of inflammation to, uh, that is heat, redness all these are absent. Pus tracks in any direction from the affected vertebrae. Anterior to the spine is known as pre-vertebral and sides of the vertebrae is known as paravertebral. Clinical features are Representations varies from non-specific back pain to complete causalgia. Coming to the cold abscess which is an integral part of tuberculosis that is collection of the pus and trabecular debris from the diseased vertebrae. The, usually the signs of inflammation which is seen in acute or other infections are absent in cold abscess and pus which is tracking through different directions as shown in this diagonal picture it can either pass anteriorly that is pre-vertebral it can go into the adjacent side of the vertebral disc this is the body of the vertebrae that is known as para-vertebral it can also go into the 
canal that is where the spinal or uh, spinal cord is passing through and cause compression and neurological effects and finally it can track down towards and goes along the nerves these are the four important areas where the cold abscess can track down the clinical features are presentation varies from non specific back pain for the patient to complete paraplegia it can also cause pain the pain is quite diffuse it is dull aching type in early cases and localized later it may be radicular that is it is in one particular region there could be the symptoms and origination can be somewhere else the third point is the stiffness paraspinal muscles which are muscles adjacent to the spine and holding the spinous process and the vertebra they are go into spasm as a protective mechanism the other clinical features are cold abscess compressing on visceral structures leads to paraplegia and classical there is deformity and the most important which is associated with tuberculosis is gibbous where you can see a form of deformity or swelling which is seen classically on the posterior part of the spine definitely there will be fever and weight loss especially seen in tuberculosis in the examination further you must always examine the gait of the patient lastly the patient walks with small and short steps he is very careful because he is very scared that the whole spine is affected and he doesn't want to walk very fast the attitude and deformity there is severe stiffness there is deformity in the form of knuckle gibbous and kyphus deformity is present if it involves more than one of vertebrae it is known as the kyphus and the gibbous is involving usually one vertebrae there is paravertebral swellings which are on the adjacent side tenderness when you uh, do a palpation of the spine spinous process you can see the severe tenderness is present you can also do thumping which you can easily make out if the patient has pain there will be definite significant reduction in flexion and extension so the movements are restricted and finally the neurological examination which is very essential to know the sensory the motor as well as the reflexes which must be done regularly coming to the investigations commonly done are the hemogram that is complete blood count erythrocyte sedimentation rate the mantu test the fnac that is fine needle aspiration cytology x ray of that affected part and suspected lesion the computed ct scan and mri is also done mri is significant especially in tuberculous spine because it gives a clear picture of the soft tissue and the bony and affection of the nerve and where at what level the compression is present so the modality of choice after x ray is mri in tuberculous spine coming to the radiological findings of tuberculous spine there is significant reduction in the disc space that is the two vertebrae that is the disc which is present it gets compressed secondly there is erosion and destruction of the whole vertebral body especially like in the central type the vertebra collapses they can be single or multiple collapses which can be seen evidence of cold abscess is classical fusiform is like a burst nest abscess it's a fusiform swelling or it can be a globular swelling the fusiform and globular are associated with tuberculosis you must remember it can come as a mcq point and rarefaction is another radiological finding this x ray image shows involving multiple vertebrae of a patient of tuberculous spine from almost the dorsal five vertebrae starting from here till the 10th and the paravertebral shadows which are on adjacent side you can see the cold abscess the image is very very clearly seen this is another case which is of tuberculous spine of d11 vertebrae the dorsal 11 thoracic 11 vertebrae totally in especially in the mri you can see that whole compression is there and collapse of the vertebrae is clearly seen this is a central type of involvement a ct scan in this image also showing a anterolateral focus of infection with cortical erosion the whole cortex is eroded here in the vertebral body 
Coming to the treatment of tuberculosis, again, the chemotherapy is one of the major line of management. Care of the spine is very, very important. In the way of first is you have to do a good bed rest in the early stages to prevent any further destruction and collapse. Secondly is the mobilization as soon as the patient improves and shows signs of improvement you should give with supportive brace and appropriate uh, orthotis or prosthesis are given. The uh, cold abscess you can do is aspiration with the help of thick needle and lastly the evacuation Uretage of the walls of the abscess and wound closure without a drain because if you put a drain chances of again reinfection can occur so you have to be careful of that the chemotherapy line of management is very very important the care of the spine is of utmost importance in the form of bed rest complete bed rest in the early stages to prevent further destruction and collapse of the spine secondly is the mobilization of the patient as soon as the patient improves with appropriate brace can be given. The cold abscess can be aspirated with the help of thick needle and another technique for the cold abscess is complete evacuation, curettage of the wall of the abscesses and the wound closure without the drains must be done. Chemotherapy in the form of the first line of drugs which is very essential. They are mainly the isoniazide, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and streptomycin. These are the five main first line drugs also known as HRZES. The doses of these drugs are isoniazide is 600 mg, rifampicin is 450 mg, the pyrazinamide is 1500 mg, ethambutol is 1200 mg and streptomycin is 75 mg, 750 mg. Streptomycin is 750 mg. The second line of chemotherapy, if the first line usually should work, but if there is resistance to any of the drugs, then you must try the second line of drugs, which are capriomycin, amikacin, canamycin, ethionamide, cycloserine, and PAS, that is para amino salicylic acid. The chemotherapeutic regimes are mainly divided into six month regime and eight month regime. The easy one is the six month regime, that is the First two months, we must give the HRZE. Short forms for that is for isoniazide, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. While the next four months, you give only isoniazide and rifampicin. So, in form is two months of HRZE and four months of HR. While the eight month regime is in such manner, that is for the first two months, you give HRZES, that is isoniazide. Rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and streptomycin. For the next one month, you give only HRZE, and the next five months is HRE. So, in total, there is two months of isoniazide, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol, and streptomycin, followed by the next one month of isoniazide, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol, and five months of isoniazide, rifampicin, and ethambutol. The tuberculosis is commonly involved with paraplegia and it's named after the person who's found it, that is Percival Pot. So it's known as also Pot's paraplegia. The commonest site again being the dorsal spine as the spinal canal is the narrowest over there. So this also can come as an MCU which is the part which is commonly affected is the dorsal spine of the entire spine. Even small compromise over there and not early detecting it can lead to neuro deficit and neurological complications. Always it's a complication of neglected tuberculosis. Person who has not taken the right treatment at the right time will suffer from this condition. The pathology is the inflammatory edema uh, due to vascular stasis around the disease area. Formation of extradural pus and granulation tissue occurs. Sequestra of devascularized bone and extra disc may be displaced into the spinal canal. That could be an internal gibbous which can form. And lastly, the infarction of the spinal cord due to blockade of the anterior spinal artery occurs. The clinical stages of POTS paraplegia are one you see in the clinically is the muscle weakness. Patient will have spasticity that becomes all stiff and patient has 
got in coordination. Increased muscle tone results in paraplegia in extension or it can be paraplegia in flexion. So increased muscle tone results in paraplegia in extension that is absence of the normal corticospinal inhibition while paraplegia in flexion due to absence of paraspinal tract functions and there could be in the end complete flaccid paraplegia where all the transmission across the cord stops. So the paraplegia in flexion is worst form of paraplegia compared to extension. The indications for operative treatment are one is that paraplegia occurring during usual conservative management. When you are trying to conservatively manage and it's worsening, you have to be careful. Secondly, the paraplegia is deteriorating in spite of taking adequate conservative line of management. Thirdly, paraplegia accompanied by uncontrolled spasticity. Fourthly, severe paraplegia with rapid onset which is a sign of severe pressure from mechanical accident or if there is cold abscess which is formed. And lastly, paraplegia with onset at an older age. So these are all the indications for operative management in tuberculous spine. What are the common procedures which are done in operative procedures for the tuberculous spine are costotransfersectomy. Costo is the part of the rib and transfersectomy is the part of transfers process. So this will give a relief of a tense cold abscess which is formed over there. In this place where you remove the part of the rib and part of transverse process only. While in the second uh, procedure is the anterolateral decompression also known as ALD which is commonly performed where you cut not only the rib also the transverse process and a part of the uh, vertebral body is also done. And lastly is the radical debridement and fusion is also known as Hong Kong procedure which are also carried out in tuberculous spine. This is uh, coming to the end of the tuberculous spine session. Thank you.